Hi, in this video we're going to talk about a new topic called curvature. So we're going to start with definition and then talk about some properties of curvature. So the symbol that we use for curvature is a kappa, and so it looks kind of like a cursive K, but it's really a kappa uh, from the Greek alphabet. And uh, that's the symbol that we use to represent curvature. And curvature is defined as the magnitude of dt ds. OK, so uh, I'm going to write here that that's called the curvature of a curve. And um, we might notice here that uh, this is defined in terms of S. So that curve would be a curve determined by R of S, an arc length parameterization of our curve. OK, so some important properties to talk about with the curvature here. Um, so first of all, I said this, but I'll go ahead and write it down. Uh, curvature is defined in terms of S, that arc length parameterization, which means that that is independent of a particular fast or slow kind of motion along the curve. It's really based on the geometry of the curve. All right, so that's important. Anything that's actually defined in terms of the geometry of the curve is really about uh, how the curve is shaped and not whether you're going fast or slow in terms of that. Uh, all right, so some other things here. Uh, if we look at the definition, uh, so we've got a derivative of the t vector, so that describes something about how t is changing. But the other part here is these bars. And with the context of paying attention to what's inside, this would be a vector function in terms of s, and then the derivative of that vector function in terms of s. So this would be a vector inside here. So these bars here are magnitude of a vector. Um, so since kappa is defined as the magnitude of a vector, uh, it's, this, it's a scalar quantity that might be a number, or it might be a function. Uh, if the curvature is constant, you might get a number here, but if it's a function, it changes as you move along the curve, uh, then you might get a function here, but a scalar function, not a vector function. Uh, and since it's the magnitude here, uh, some other things about that, K is a, kappa is a scalar that is not ever negative. It will be zero or bigger. And so we'll talk just a little bit about what if the curvature is zero, and then what if the curvature is maybe just a little bit bigger than zero, and what if the curvature is very large. So I'm going to draw a picture of a curve over here, uh, just kind of a, an example of a curve. I'm just going to draw a curve that's in the surface of the screen here, so uh, we're not going to worry about it being in three dimensions here, but I just kind of drew this S shaped curve here. I'll give it an orientation so it's going that way. And then what I'm going to draw on here is just a few little examples or um, images that would represent the unit tangent vector at different points along the curve. So with the orientation, I know that the tangent vector should be in the direction of the orientation of the curve. And I know it should be one unit long. So whatever we decide is our one unit of length. And I'll just draw that vector tangent to the curve in the direction of orientation, and I'll just draw this one and say, all right, that's what I'm going to call one unit of length for my scale here. And so at a few different places here along the curve, I'll just draw some examples of vectors that are about that long and tangent to the curve. That's maybe not very tangent to the curve. Let me adjust that a little bit there. I'm eyeballing these tangent vectors here. We'll look later at a computer 
uh, representation here where it'll do a little bit better job probably than my estimates here by hand of that tangent vector. Uh, it's maybe not very tangent, like there. Okay, so uh, the idea here is that I want to think about that tangent vector, that's the t vector, but also paying attention to how that tangent vector changes as we move along the curve here. So as we move along the curve, so for a specific unit of distance along the curve, that's what the S would represent, an arc length along the curve. Here, we notice that that tangent vector changes a lot as we move along that curve. Here it's pointing up, and then just a small distance along the curve, it's pointing in a completely different direction. And then as we move a distance here, it's changed some more. Here, you might notice as that as we move along the curve, that tangent vector is changing, but not by as much. So as we move along this distance along the curve, the tangent vector has changed, but not by very much. And then in this region of the curve, where the curve is a little bit more straight, if I draw a few tangent vectors there, you'll see that that tangent vector is really barely changing at all in this part of the curve that's pretty straight here. And then as we move along the curve where it makes this other bend, you see that over here the tangent vector is changing a lot. Uh, just one, dis one unit of distance or however far along the curve we go, we see it's pointing in one direction here and then a completely different direction as it rounds that bend and comes back around the other side there. So this is intended to sort of illustrate the idea here of what it would mean for curvature to be zero, what it would mean for it to be close to zero but positive, and what it would mean for it to be very, very large here. Um, so we'll just kind of write down a couple of examples of that here. So curvature being zero, being exactly equal to zero, would mean that dt ds is the zero vector. So that would mean that the tangent vector is not changing at all. So the curvature would be zero and the tangent vector does not change at all. Here on this curve, it's probably changing just a very little bit here, uh, but this might be a place where the the tangent vector changes just a little, so our curvature would be close to zero, not equal to zero. This, though, if it's actually equal to zero, would mean that the tangent vector does not change at all. And so you might be able to visualize that. That would indicate that you're moving along a straight part of the curve. We talked about that when we looked at the football in a previous video. So it does not change at all, so you're really moving along a straight curve. Um, here, where the tangent vector is changing, but just a little bit, uh, we would have a curvature value that is close to zero. Probably not exactly equal to zero unless there's a part of the curve that's perfectly straight right there. But a curvature that's close to zero where that tangent vector is not changing much at all. So a curvature that is close to zero would mean that the tangent vector doesn't change hardly at all. The curve is nearly straight. And then if we look at some other parts of the curve here where uh, that tangent vector is changing a lot, so on this picture I drew, that's kind of at each end and maybe also here, the tangent vector changes kind of a lot uh, as we make this bend. Uh, if you notice the geometry of that curve in that region, uh, that curve is very bendy in that region. So a large curvature indicates that that unit tangent vector is changing a lot as you move along the curve with respect to arc length. And so you might describe the curve as being very bendy, a tight bend on that curve. The curve is very bendy. So a way to think about what curvature describes here is that this really describes how tight the bends are on the curve. And so you can think about, you know, in all kinds of applications in terms of designs of roads or curves or on-ramps or off-ramps, that the curvature would be an idea that you would think about there, whether a car is traveling fast or slow or somebody's walking along that ramp, the curvature of that part of the curve would be the same. It's independent of a particular kind of motion. It's really about the tightness of the bend there. Uh, all right, so bendiness of the curve. The other property that you should think about here is that if you're going to calculate curvature, you probably would prefer to avoid S. Remember that we did an example where we converted a parameterization of a curve to an arc length parameterization. 
And part of the point of that example was to emphasize that in general, converting to an arc length parameterization is messy. And so generally you would really like to avoid having to go through an arc length parameterization to calculate something. Um, so you would like to have some shortcut formulas for calculating curvature or calculation formulas, some books call them. There are many. I would encourage you not to memorize any of them. Depending on uh, the, the emphasis of your instructor, they might choose to ask you to memorize some of these or not. I do not ask students to memorize these. These formulas are provided. There are many. I'm going to write one of them down that I often use. I believe one of your homework problems is showing that this particular formula uh, is equivalent to this definition. And so going from this definition to this particular formula, this is one I like, uh, the magnitude of V cross A divided by the magnitude of V cubed. All right, so uh, we'll do an example where we use this calculation formula to calculate curvature for a particular curve and then analyze what those results tell us about the geometry of the curve. Um, but again, unless you're expected to memorize these, I would encourage you not to worry about memorizing them. There are some other shortcut formulas depending on how your curve is given to you. Uh, there might be some ways to calculate curvature that are even faster and more efficient than this. So you might look at some of those formulas and as you go through your homework, make sure you're paying attention to whether you're doing that problem in the most efficient way or if there would be a more efficient formula for the particular problem you're working on.